arcades, flashing lights, the chaotic swell of feverish voices, title screen music, and the clacking of buttons and joysticks. A welcoming, nostalgic place where gamers can come to sit down, relax, and spend their time doing the thing they love, playing video games with others. While in most parts of the world, arcades are but a distant memory, in Japan, they remain a huge part of the country's gaming culture. Streets like Akihabara in Tokyo are awash with that familiar neon glow, and despite the advent of home consoles and gaming PCs, arcades remain the preferred venue for thousands upon thousands of gamers. This communal gaming environment, where players connect in person rather than online, was similarly mimicked by Japan's neighbor, South Korea. However, rather than arcade cabinets and gachapon machines, South Korea's version of the arcade is filled with something that makes them resemble more of an office space, PCs. So how did the PC become the platform of choice for gaming in South Korea? Today, we're gonna find out. Now, before we start on today's video, we'd like to kindly ask that if you enjoy our content, please think about subscribing and hitting the bell to stay up to date. We want to keep making amazing content for you, and it would help a ton. Thank you. To fully understand the story we're about to tell, we're going to dive into a bit of a history lesson. So grab your pencil and notepad, because we're learning about the Asian financial crisis. Also known as the IMF crisis, the 1997 Asian financial crisis was a period of time during which the economics of many countries in East and Southeast Asia collapsed completely. As the value of their currencies declined, many feared that the crisis would impact the rest of the developed world, resulting in a global economic meltdown. Essentially, leading up to the collapse, the economies of countries in East and Southeast Asia relied heavily on international trade. One of their biggest trading partners was the United States of America. Six years prior to the Asian financial crisis, in 1991, the US went through a recession of its own. And to help the country recover, the US government, under the tutelage of Alan Greenspan, lowered interest rates on loans. This allowed US companies to take out loans with relatively low risk and start investing internationally once again. For these companies, countries like South Korea, Indonesia, and Thailand looked like an excellent business opportunity, and they began pumping money into East and Southeast Asia. This money was then invested into industry and export, and countries like those we mentioned just now had to put their own money into building infrastructure and ramping up production to keep up with foreign demand. With all of this money being poured into speculative value, a bubble started to inflate. As time went on, the bubble kept getting bigger, and if foreign cash flow stopped coming in at a steady rate, it was possible that the bubble could As the US dollar began to recover and depreciate again, the exponential growth of industry was no longer sustained by demand from foreign investors, and suddenly, new projects stopped turning a profit. With panic setting in, foreign investors started withdrawing their credit, creating a credit crunch which devastated East and Southeast Asia. The result was a massive decline in both currency value and stock market value, leading to business closure, unemployment, and widespread poverty across the region. For example, in South Korea, the IMF crisis saw the value of the South Korean won drop from 1,000 won on the US dollar to 2,000 won on the US dollar in the matter of just one month. That's a drop in value of half. And because USD was the international currency for doing business, there was very little that these Asian countries could do to bolster their own economies. Though the nation was able to recover financially after the Korean War, the financial crisis was enough to make all of South Korea fall back into recession. It got so bad that the government had to ask the public for donations and financial aid. Families all over came in with their own personal gold and raised more than 10 million USD. All of this was donated to the government just to keep the country afloat. With companies going bankrupt and people sinking below the poverty line, South Koreans needed a distraction to keep their minds off of their day-to-day -day problems. The solution for many? When I wanted something for my Nintendo 64! Video games. And what a time it was for video games. As in 1997 and into 1998, consoles like the Nintendo 64, PlayStation, and Sega Saturn were all on the market. However, none of these consoles made it to Korea. For those of us in North America, that might seem surprising. While the consoles we mentioned were all insanely popular, 
They were also created by Japanese companies. Relations between Japan and South Korea were tenuous at best, and hostile at worst. Without getting too much into it, there was a lot of bad blood between the two countries in the wake of World War II. After Japan ceded control of South Korea at the end of the Second World War, South Korea enacted the Law for Punishing Anti-National Deeds, which banned and restricted the broadcast of foreign media. This ban extended to things like CDs and video games. And while they never specified any specific countries, these laws were almost certainly aimed directly at Japan. While some consoles made it through the embargo, like Sega importing its consoles through Samsung under rebranded names like the Super Aladdin Boy, Koreans generally tried to avoid Japanese products. So, with no Nintendo, Sega, or Sony products to play on, I'll give you one guess as to what system most Koreans played their games on. That's right, personal computers. Well, maybe take the word personal out of that phrase. Let's not forget, the country was recovering from one of the largest financial crises in human history, and most people simply couldn't afford to have a PC in their own home. A cheap alternative was devised, the PC Bang. PC bangs, which literally translates into PC rooms, are gaming centers where people use computers in exchange for an hourly fee. The origin of the PC bang can be traced to March 1988, when a Jonja Cafe, or electronic cafe, opened up, which allowed people access to two 16-bit computers. But it wasn't until six years later, in April 1994, when the first true internet cafe opened its doors. Almost immediately, it caught widespread attention from Koreans all over. Pretty quickly, internet cafes were popping up all over Korea, but the popularity of PC bangs specifically for gaming really exploded with the release of StarCraft in 1998. The popularity of StarCraft is the result of a few things, the most important being that StarCraft didn't require a high-end PC to play well. Along with that, it was super easy to run the game on a local area network meaning you could sit down and start playing with friends within seconds. With StarCraft and PC Bungs gaining popularity, the prevalence of online multiplayer games like StarCraft did not go unnoticed by game developers, and it quickly became common practice for PC Bungs to have pre-arranged deals with publishers for special perks in their games. For example, if you were to go to a PC Bung today to play a game like League of Legends, all of the champions would be unlocked and available to play. Not needing to spend your own money to unlock tons of characters, only further established PC Bangs as the go-to place to play games with friends in Korea. Today, PC Bangs have become a cultural staple in South Korea, as much a place for gaming as a place for socializing. To illustrate the growth of PC Bangs in Korea, the estimated number of PC Bang establishments in 1997 was around 100. By 2011, that number had grown to 25,000. Plus, PC Bangs earn a lot of money. In 2020, during the COVID-19 pandemic when restrictions were tightened, PC Bangs in Korea brought in around 1.7 trillion won, the equivalent of 1.3 billion USD, and this hefty sum of money was actually a decrease in revenue from the previous year. Think about that. When everyone was in lockdown, internet cafes brought in 1.7 billion dollars. Apart from the financial success of the PC Bang, the cultural relevance of the institution cannot be overstated. Having a place to escape and play highly competitive games led to Korea accepting video games in mainstream culture more than a decade sooner than regions like Europe and North America. Many professional League of Legends and StarCraft players credit PC Bangs for allowing them to become pros in the first place. The PC Bang is so entrenched in Korean culture that even as Korean-Japanese relations improved throughout the early 2000s and consoles like the PS2 became widely available, personal computers remained the medium of choice for competitive gamers. However, the PC Bang being insanely affordable, with hourly rates for most establishments ranging from around 41 cents to $1.20 USD per hour, gaming addiction is a concern, especially when most PC Bangs are open 24-7. The conversation surrounding gaming addiction played a large role in the government's decision to get involved with the education of Korean youths. Their decision was to limit the time teenagers were allowed to spend online introducing a law which would prohibit teenagers under the age of 17 from playing online games between the hours of midnight to 6 a.m. The bill was passed into law on April 29, 2011, and came into effect in November of the same year. However, the law was abolished recently on August 25, 2021, with Deputy Prime Minister and Education Minister Yoo Yun-hae saying, quote, In the changing media environment, 
The ability of children to decide for themselves and protect themselves has become more important than anything. PC gaming in Korea originated from a history of hardship and economic turmoil. Despite this, the cultural significance of the PC has been mostly positive. Much like the arcade culture in countries like Japan, PC bangs are a social hub for young Koreans to gather with friends, to hang out and enjoy their time. Obviously, nothing can last on top forever. And with things like mobile gaming gradually increasing in popularity in Korea, PC gaming may finally face some serious competition. Still, with all the history behind PC gaming in Korea, it's hard to see any major changes happening in the near future. This video is made possible thanks to our wonderful patrons. Massive thank you to everyone on this list, and shout out to Jason B, Brendan, QB, Foxy, Moth, Pachanas, Pin, Sierra, Shampoo, Spartacus, Tommy, and Yashichi for being Platinum supporters. And an extra special shout out to Steven, Noodles, and Marco for being Diamond supporters. We really appreciate it. If you want to talk to us, check out our Discord. If you want to support our channel and get info on unreleased videos, check out our Patreon. If you want to help us out in a different way, leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell to stay up to date is also appreciated. My name is Jonah, thanks for watching.